Hi, this is Sarah from SarahYip.com, Facebook, The Numbers Queen, and Instagram, SarahYip1111, here with an in-depth numerology reading um, and basically a lesson for Kathy Freeman, an incredibly inspiring Australian athlete. So I've done lots of preparation for this uh, session. I hope you really enjoy it. What I do, basically, I'm a numerologist. This is my absolute passion. I've done some charts for Kathy um, in my crazy doctor's writing, and I've translated these into a lifetime uh, numerology outline. So basically, your date of birth and your name or names are the key to your soul contract. Now, you've probably heard people talk about this, but it's actually exquisite. It's the book of what you plan to do when you came here. The timings are impeccably accurate and the universe and those around you who agreed to be your teachers and soulmates help to keep you on track. So let's find out uh, what Kathy's soul contract reveals and uh, let's start. So the first thing is Kathy was born on the 16th of February 1973. Uh, there was a lot of synchronicities as I prepared this. This is actually my son's uh, birthday as well. So when you add those numbers together in numerology from left to right, which is the system I use, this adds to 29, which gives Kathy Freeman a 29 life path in numerology, which we can also reduce down to 11 or 2. So formally written 29, 11, 2. And we'll see actually these are pivotal ages in her life where major decisions and learnings are happening. Now I actually share this life path and I specialize in people with it. So it was um, very touching and profound to prepare this uh, for Kathy. Um, basically, this is called the spiritual messenger. I often joke it should be called don't shoot the spiritual messenger and we'll say that's definitely played out for Kathy. It's about being a double pioneer and a double catalyst and basically a double black sheep. In order to create peace on the planet, greater connection and intimacy, and to do a lot of healing between the genders, to promote quality, uh, democracy and connectedness. People with those strong 11s in their charts, and we'll see that Kathy has these throughout her entire chart, they do come here as those 11, 11 messengers. So some of you might know this is the, the repeating numbers uh, that I talk about at length on my site. You can even see Kathy, um, this is her and her suit uh, where she won the gold medal in Sydney 2000. Uh, it has the triple one and the zero. That's actually the code that comes just before 1111 and it's about um, basically preparing for awakening. The triple one is also a healing at the root chakra, the base chakra level, and it's all about using your physical body um, for new beginnings and creating more confidence and positivity in the world. So there are no mistakes. There's only uh, miracles you finally noticed. So we know a bit about her life path, this number 11. It's called a master life path in numerology because it brings double ups and double downs and lots of uh, psychic ability and intuition and sensitivity. And often you find 11s in the public eye. If you go to my site, sariot.com, and look under Find Your Life Path, I actually list, for example, a lot of the famous 11s and you'll see um, they really are highly uh, represented in the sports, entertainment, politics, all these realms. So Kathy's come in to do a lot of healing at that second chakra level, which is all about um, relationships. It's also about how we manage our energy, our finances, um, our sense of basically inner peace and balance. She actually shares a uh, life path, as I mentioned, with lots of people who are in the spotlight. Some examples would be Mozart. Uh, I actually share his birthday. Uh, Barack and Michelle Obama, Dame Judi Dench, and to be honest, the list goes on. A few other things about her basic numerology. So when I looked at Kathy's full name, and just to let you know, everything that I talk about today is actually available on the internet and in public. I've done my very best to keep it accurate, but I am human. And I'm doing this after hours when my baby's asleep, so it's just my best efforts. If you spot an error, just let me know, and I'll do my best to fix it. So Kathy's full name, Catherine Astrid Salome Freeman. 
it actually adds to 11 as well. There you go. So what you see is what you get with her. And this shows what kind of career she'll have. And again, that would predispose her to something where she has a public and private side and perhaps even two careers at once. And she's really here to bring the future into the now. This name has uh, number eight, Soul Urge, that comes from the vowels. If you'd like to learn this kind of thing, it's on my site. I have lots of classes, study groups, things like that. I try to make it easy for you. But she's got an eight soul urge. So this is someone who's incredibly committed. Um, she's all in to the point of being obsessive, especially when it comes to relationships or people close to her. So this idea of what goes around comes around. Um, and once you're in, you're in for life, I would say, most of the time. Her inner dream is a three, the artist, the public speaker, the writer. I've definitely seen that come from her over the years. I notice actually in her name, there isn't a strong number seven. This is to do with the crown chakra. This, some people believe, could be something that um, was not strong in her in terms of her past life or maybe the family she's coming from. The seven is that sort of strong connection with the soul and the divine, having your own spiritual path that you have tested and you understand uh, through lived experience. Um, it's interesting, we'll talk about this as well, but Kathy's had um, different exposures to religions and spirituality, which I feel would have developed this number in her chart throughout time. Now we know Kathy as Kathy Freeman. This is her known name. And when it's a public figure, you always look at the, the name that people use the most. So Kathy Freeman also adds to 11. <laughs> now I didn't know this before I did her chart, um, but it's one of the beauties of numerology, um, that it's very clean, it's very black and white, and it's something you can't argue with. So, you know, Kathy really, when she was preparing for this lifetime, she ticked all the boxes for making a big impact. But the challenge is that the 11 um, has that sort of almost split aspect, and it, it is often a much more difficult childhood and early years, uh, which is definitely the case with Kathy. So Kathy Freeman, as I mentioned, has an 11 aspect, um, which actually becomes very prominent at the age of 56. We'll talk about that later in the prediction section. It also has a one solid and one inner dream. So there's that 11, 11 code. And if you've heard of star people or star seeds, I would certainly place Kathy in that category. It's one of the reasons I've chosen this as the background. And I myself identify as uh, one of those tribes. So. The idea is you come to Earth and you bring lots of gifts from other places, often to help Earth become more peaceful, more transparent, more kind. And I, I guess that the benefits often with star people is extreme stamina, an incredible focus on their mission. Um, the pain, I suppose, is often a sense of being alien, misunderstood. Um, from another place and often struggling even just with having the, the basics of a human body. But all these things do get easier as you understand yourself and as you surround yourself with a constellation of friends and helpers. Kathy Freeman, interestingly, does not miss any numbers. It's a full set and that would give her a lot of power with this name, although sometimes uh, that as well can be isolating in terms of not always feeling like um, you can talk about what's going on. When I look at uh, Kathy's chart in detail, I see that she has one, two, three, and three, six, nine lines in her chart. Um, this I would generally see in CEOs, and it, you know, Kathy did start her foundation, and to me, she's always spoken very clearly um, and been very good at presenting, so this all makes sense. Um, she would be someone who's quite strategic in what she does, obviously, you know, when she's in a good space. A few other things. Um, so you can do sort of these advanced calculations in numerology where you start moving into the realm of prediction. This is a lot more complicated. Although the calculations are easy, any primary school child could do it, there's permissions involved. Um, so I, I do daily work on myself and have done for, you know, a long time in order to sort of be able to hold the space for the information to come in. That's not to make it sound unreachable, but there's definitely a cost for this type of work. It really has to come through the heart, or in my experience, it can make you become a bit unstable. 
because uh, it's kind of like having a really strong surge of electricity come through. So I've done my very best, um, you know, in this distance reading for Kathy to look at her timings. What I noticed about her chart that's so interesting is the number nine rules her pinnacles or life lessons really until about 52. And uh, that's not that common, you know, to have the same numbers over and over again in a chart. It does show a very determined soul and one who really wanted to make a difference. But there is, as I mentioned, going to be a cost in terms of not being able um, to, to manage always the everyday things as easily. When you see lots of nines like this, it's often someone who's an old soul, um, has been to Earth many times, as well as these other dimensions, has well travelled, so to speak, and where they often will start something, walk away, start something, walk away. The 11 energy is about double beginnings, so it all blends in perfectly. Um, so what I'll do, I'm just going to keep moving. Let's um, start looking through Kathy's life a little bit more at the micro level now. It's going to be small on your screen, uh, but I'll see if I can make this available in a blog post that goes with this for those of you who want to get super nerdy. Uh, for the rest of you, you might just like to um, listen to me as I look at these tiny little lines of text. So what I'm going to do is share my screen. Um, so this reading is copyright. Obviously, Cassie's life, it belongs to her, but the way this is set out, um, please Ask me for permission if you're wanting to use this. It, I do prefer that it's all kept together. Um, a lot of what I'm talking about here is actually available on my site. I really do believe that we all have a right to know why we're here, but at the same time, I also teach um, sort of the more complex concepts through classes, as I mentioned. Uh, so here we are, um, Kathy Freeman's Numerology. So I'm going to see if I can just zoom in a little bit. Give me a sec. Well, I do that. Um, this will be interesting. Uh, okay, this is going to be interesting. Okay, well, look, I'm going to do my best. Let's see if I can make just like a tiny little bit less. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. All right, well, look, this will just have to do, and I'll just be a little talking head for now over here. Okay, so, look, this will make more sense if you've been following my work for some time. If you haven't, you know, it might be time to jump in, especially if you see repeating numbers. When I was working in fundraising, which was my job before this, so working with charities, I often found that people would blank out or glaze over if you talk about statistics. And really what gets people's attention and inspires them the most to change their lives or, um, you know, put money down and time down is one person's story well told. So I'm going to do my absolute best to tell Kathy's story Obviously, this is all about her, and I'm just doing my very best as an outsider who hasn't met her. Um, and it's just um, basically something I'm going to send her as well to, to check. Okay, so Kathy Freeman was born in 1973 uh, in Mackay to Cecilia, her mother of Kuku Yelanji heritage, and Norman of the Biri Gaba people. Now, what we see is that you know, the first few years of her life are not documented. So I, I've sort of just done my best with the public information. And what I know from having looked at her chart is there's these certain years which are going to prove difficult for her, perhaps some of the most difficult years of her life. And these are her personal year fives, which is to do with the throat chakra, being able to see different points of view, be willing to stick your neck out and take a risk and also break away from perhaps her the upbringing. So we see uh, that when Kathy was in her personal year five, she was uh, quite young. Now, a couple of these things I need to adjust, but essentially we know that she ran her first race around five and around that age, also her parents divorced. There was a lot of challenges in her early life. So I will update this for the blog. I also know that around that time her father returned home um, he had uh, come and gone uh, due to some addiction issues. So basically there was a lot of moving around when Kathy was young and this is definitely something I could see in her chart. We just go forwards. We know that Kathy started to win things around the age of 8, 9, 10. So she got her first gold medal in school athletics around 8. 
interestingly, this was her personal year one. This is always a big year in your chart. If you want to find your personal years, literally just Google Sarah Yip personal years and you'll find an article. It's really simple. It's just the sum of your um, last birthday reduced to a number. So in Kathy's uh, New Beginnings year, she started to win medals at school athletics. Uh, you know, within a couple of years, she'd been inspired by Raylene Boyle, who was in One Life Pass, who was that resonance with her lessons, um, you know, who, who basically won in the Brisbane Commonwealth Games and inspired Kathy. Also, Kathy's mum uh, changed their faith from Catholicism to Baha'i. And, uh, you know, that's interesting because, you know, they're quite different. So there's a lot of this exposure to different spiritual worlds. Um, and it, this time in Kathy's life around the personal year one, personal year two, was also um, impacting her life past number as that's an 11 two. So not to get into too much detail, but essentially by the time Kathy was 10, and this is starting to lead up to a really important age of 11, she realised there was racism happening. Uh, you know, there was a race where she didn't get a trophy because she was black. Um, but she had a stepfather, Bruce, uh, and, and other people who believed in her. He actually told her she could win a gold medal one day. And I'll talk about these little codes about Ruby later. Ruby is actually Kathy's daughter. And I felt one of the reasons I felt so moved to do this video was actually because Ruby is at a turning point. So that will come to that later. So as a number 11 life path, Cassie has uh, major turning points at, um, you know, 2 and 11 as a child and 21 as an adult. Now at 11 and even at 12, Cassie was sick. Although she was competing, she had to take time off, which would have been really frustrating and debilitating. Um, she had glandular fever. She had shingles. Throughout that time, from what I understand, she still had people... Um, keeping her spirits up and perhaps that's where she got a lot of interest in like you know positive psychology affirmations that kind of thing so that um, time when she was sick also coincided with another five personal year and five is also about persistence and this is something that Kathy was really having to learn uh, in her early life so by the age of 14 uh, Kathy had actually already told her high school vocational officer, she wanted to win an Olympic medal. That was her career goal, and I'm sure at the time it was a bit of a surprise to them. Uh, but I really love that story because I have actually written about this, but star people and star seeds, especially the girls, they do seem to have a lot of change around this 13, 14, 15 period. I know I did. This is actually when I discovered drama, meditation, all those things. Um, but also a lot of them develop issues with their food, uh, eating disorders, anxiety. And I think it's because perhaps the anesthetic wears off, you know, when you come to earth and you're sort of just getting by. And then around that time, puberty hits and you suddenly realize you're here for the long run. Look, nevertheless, I feel that that's when Kathy's crown chakra started to open. Her spirit was really reaching her and letting her know that this is why she came to the planet. So I just love that story. Um, look, Kathy just really started to power on from that point. We know, you know, around the one personal year, there's always a lot of change. It's a rebirth time. It's when the root chakra is activated. The year before, that's also big, the nine personal year. This is the soul blueprint chakra healing time. It's when we're rewriting history. So what I'm basically saying is your nine and one personal year is always huge. Even if you don't remember them, sometimes you just need to take some time and go back. It will come to you. So we know that um, by her, by the age of 16, 17, you know, Kathy had won a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games, which is mind-blowing. Um, she had a scholarship uh, to an international school, which really helped because the people were a lot more diverse than where she had been. Um, she had won Young Australian of the Year around this time. She'd moved to Melbourne with her coach and then partner Nick. And very sadly, um, her, her beloved sister Anne-Marie died now, I actually get chills over my whole body when I do this, and I did when I prepared this reading. Anne-Marie is, you know, probably one of Kathy's spirit guides. Kathy's talked about her quite a bit. Now, she had cerebral palsy. She, often, she had to live in a home, so Kathy only saw her every few months, from what I understand. But she had this incredible impact on Kathy because, of course, Kathy saw the contrast between her young, able body and her sister. 
Now, Anne-Marie died only three days after Cassie started winning medals, I think after her first gold medal. And as you know, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult topic, but I wonder if there was some sort of handshake agreement with Anne-Marie and Cassie. I don't say, you know, that the timings were fixed in terms of death. I always believe there's some flexibility, but that Anne-Marie came in in a way to, to really make sure Cathy understood her purpose and then has sort of gone behind the scenes to perhaps keep helping Cathy. We may never know, um, but I definitely feel energy around me as I talk about this, and I definitely felt there was a there was really a powerful part of this reading, so I wanted to mention it. So thank you, Anne-Marie, for all that you have done and all you continue to do. Um, so then Cathy moved into her 2 or 11 personal year, which, of course, triggered her life path. At that point, you know, she's doing really well. She got to the World Championships, although she didn't run. Um, you know, by 19, she was actually the first Australian Aboriginal to go to the Olympics. I should mention here, because I feel like this is relevant, Cathy's daughter Ruby is a 19 life path, 19, 10, 1. Children choose a life path that's healing something, not only in themselves, but their parents' timeline. Now, Ruby has chosen 19 as her key number. At 19, this is when Kathy went to the Olympics. And at 10, you know, we talked about this before, at 10 was when Kathy was experiencing racism. It's just really interesting. Uh, there are no accidents, and I feel that Ruby is also going to be, well, probably even an earlier boomer than Kathy because she's got that love behind her and, you know, all the understanding that Kathy has and her partner has. Anyway, so let's go back. So, you know, by 20, Kathy was very well established in her athletics career. And this is this was really fun, but throughout the reading we saw we see a lot of like exact matches of the life path. So there was this track rivalry with Melinda Gainsford, another athlete, who is, depending on how you calculate it, a two life path or also an eleven. And I think that's no accident. Uh you know, everything that seems to be set up quite perfectly uh, with Kathy's life so that she's constantly needing people who polarise her into action and she does the same for others. I, I have to admit, um, so I was a runner as a child but at five. Instead of running in a race, I actually fell over and opened up my chin and my parents told me not to run <laughs> ever again. And that said, I, I still played a lot of sports but... Um, when I worked uh, in the United Nations, I actually busted my ankle at the age of 24. And I have not run since then, so that was actually 17 years ago. How is this relevant? So, you know, I do numerology partly personal passion, partly I, I really feel that it, it's a way of, of serving. I went for my first run the other day after tuning into Kathy's chart. I mean, how couldn't you? <laughs> when, when, when you tune into this energy, it's so powerful. And I have to admit, it was not easy. I'm um, seeing a physio, and that's helping, but brought up a lot of my fear about the future. So I'm actually hoping that by delivering this reading and moving it on into the next um, stage, I guess, I'll be able to go for my second run. So thank you, Kathy, for that. And I, I know you have helped millions of people really believe in the power of their body and their mind. So let's go back. Um, so by 21, Kathy was again in a five personal year. <laughs> now, this is not to make you superstitious. It's, I'm not saying that if you go in a five personal year, it's going to suck. What I've done is I've looked very carefully through Kathy's chat when I'm saying this, and everyone has different years of challenge and different ways they'll deal with it. And actually, if you know it, you can make it a little bit gentler on yourself. Um, but nevertheless, it's interesting how accurate it is, it is here. Kathy stuck her neck out again. She won silver in the Commonwealth Relay. And then she chose to carry the Australian and Aboriginal flag. And back in 1994, that was a huge deal, like across the world media. And that was definitely a don't shoot the spiritual messenger moment in her life. If we just move forwards, um, so if we go to 23, uh, Kathy was actually in a clash with Marie Jose Perec. I hope I said her name correctly. Um, French athlete, interestingly, another 11. And, uh, you know, they had a lot of ups and downs together. And it's interesting that later on, Kathy got to know Marie Jose and apparently found they had a lot in common, which you can also see from this new moment you're reading. 11s do get along, 
Um, I have to admit, my best friends and worst enemies tend to be 11s. Uh, but yeah, look, if you you know can take that step back, what you often find is 11s do come as ex ambassadors. So if you can understand their cause, you can understand them, and perhaps why sometimes they seem so blunt in the way that they uh, have to be in order to awaken others. So if we move forwards, um, we see that by, again, that next 9-1 cycle in the personal years, Kathy had been named Australian of the Year. She also um, had an injury. Um, she had a breakup with her uh, coach and partner. Now, nine years are about healing, conclusions, past life resolution. They're big years. Um, and it doesn't surprise me some of these things that have happened. I mean, often you, we get sort of the rewards for our hard work that we put in for those nine-year cycles. Um, by her personal one year, she had married Sandy. Interestingly, uh, so he was a 26-8 life path in numerology, which is the boss. Um, she met him through Nike, who were her sponsors. Now, actually at 26, his turning point age, he joined Nike. Um, and look, I've studied thousands of people, and I could just you know, reel off so many examples of this. And this is the reason I like numerology, because it's really clean. As I mentioned, it's black and white. And you can do it at home. You don't have to believe me. When you do this in your own life, it actually does open this portal where you realize you chose a lot of the things in your life. That's not to say you should suffer through them. It's to say that you have a strong ability to change things around you and to mobilize resources to be successful, that you are a key player in your life. Um, so if we move forwards, when Kathy was in her 2 or 11 personal year, which we know again is important because of her life path, she lit the flame at the Sydney Olympics and she won that very famous race on the 25th of September, which was, um, depending on how you calculate it, you know, potentially an 11 uh, personal year, 11, was it 11 personal year, 11 personal months, 9 personal days, so it was that, almost that 2 9-11 energy that's in her life path. I was probably getting way too nerdy for this time of the night, uh, but I got excited by it because it kind of suggests everything was in her favour that day and, um, you know, good on her for going for it. There's so much pressure on her to win and she did it. It's interesting, if you've seen the photos, she was so disappointed with herself because she didn't run her personal best. And honestly, like I have actually read for other Olympians, it's not the same context you see with all those people's um, emotions in the arena. Like what she did was was literally interstellar because um, you know it was it was full of, of people's angst. So it's kind of like running through mud. So I just you know I think she's still a bit too hard on herself. But hey, that's eleven for you. They always want to give eleven out of ten. All right, so what we see is at the same time that she had this incredible public success, there was a lot of challenges for her. She had money issues, there was a tax debt, um, she was unwell with laryngitis, you know, perhaps almost didn't make it to, to do her major Olympics win, but she battled through. And, you know, so one of the things I say with 11 life paths is if you are an 11, you usually have a life story that no one believes. And Kathy is a great example of this because when I read a history in order to research this reading, I mean, seriously, I just couldn't believe it. Like, I already liked her so much and then I liked her even more. Um, and, you know, just a reminder, I am also a 2911. I have a pretty uh, wacky uh, life, um, having been a scientist with the United Nations and Australian government now doing numerology. But, hey, uh, this is what we do in order to show people that anything's possible. So let's keep going, shall we? Um, look, Kathy then was building up to her adult life path turning point of 29. So we always know the years around that are humongous. And they really were. You know, she took a break. And this is like at the peak of her career. She took a break to nurse her husband through throat cancer. Um, she, she briefly went back to the Commonwealth Games. She, she settled this lawsuit with her ex. Um, there was a breach of contract um, that he brought against her. 
Um, she met her next partner, Joel, although, you know, they, they just met at that point. But so much happened around her life past turning point, which set up a lot of, you know, the, the next few years of her life. Personally, for me at 29, this is when someone bought me a book on numerology. <laughs> And I actually then, you know, I went pretty far with it, as you can see. And also at that time, I was having a lot of shifts in my career and relationship as well. So, look, we have another five year here for Cassie. And uh, she's not only retired, she's had a split with Sandy, which, you know, you can tell would have been very difficult. We keep moving forwards. There's another split here, Hall of Fame. And then, you know, beautifully at this, you know, powerful 33 age, you know, 33 is this Christ consciousness age, um, you know, got engaged to Jamie, her current husband. So interesting, Jamie's also an 11. <laughs> You're going to start thinking that everyone's an 11, but this is not true. Um, so the life paths actually go from 1 to 9, 11, 22, 33, 44. I've got information on all of those on my site. It just so happens that Kathy's chart is really at one end of the charts that I have done so I literally have cupboards around me here with thousands of charts that I've handwritten. Cassie's chart is seriously just, you know, an outlier. Um, and I love it. And that's one of the reasons I really wanted to present it to you. Uh, even if you're not into numerology, who knows, maybe you'll get into it. As a result of this video, maybe you'll find out you're an 11 <laughs> or you're married to an 11. But there'll be a reason that you're watching it, especially if you're still watching it at this point. And thank you so much for caring. So look, we go back to Jamie. He's born on the 8th of the 8th. This is the Lionsgate portal. This is a star seed number. That is amazing. Um, now, I don't know much about Jamie, but uh, clearly a very powerful being. Um, I notice he's got the 7, 8, 9 in his chart. I have that too. And that's a lot about spiritual activity and awareness and prophecy. That's interesting. Um, and the 159, which is, you know, really a good, strong leader and um, very stubborn. Anyway, so if we just keep moving, so Cassie's now, what I'm saying is she's an 11 married to an 11. And I have seen this happen before. And, um, you know, this is a lot of firepower in one family. It's a lot of chiefs. So if we move through, we see um, around 34, 35, Cassie's going through another 9-1 cycle. In my experience, especially um, the 29-11s, really only come into this, like, solidness in themselves and really that strong sense of surety around their mid-30s. For me personally, this was the age where I actually, um, you know, had children and for me that's been very stabilizing and joyful. So for Kathy at this time, she started the Kathy Freeman Foundation, um, which was providing education to disadvantaged Indigenous children. Her book, Born to Run, came out, um, which you can see, you know, in that nine year, it's all about bringing it together. In her personal one year, uh, she was part of a TV show, Who Do You Think You Are? And she found out she had Chinese ancestry, which is so cool uh, because I'm Chinese. So, you know, I just think that's amazing. Um, but sadly, in her one personal year, one personal month, which was a deep time of new beginnings and ground zeros, her brother died in a car crash, which was, you know, horrific. And that's really sad. And again, I just want to reiterate, I, I don't personally believe our date of death is um, defined. A, a lot of people do believe that, but I don't. I believe there's a bit of push-pull. Um, but again, I, I would imagine there's something here where he's gone behind the scenes um, to help Cassie. And look, I didn't mention it, but, you know, also her father potentially has done that. And Cassie has talked about believing in the art. So then what we see is in her 11 or 2 personal year, um, she actually married Jamie and they're still together. Uh, she had her lovely daughter, Ruby. So Ruby was born when Kathy was 38. That's really interesting because Jamie's a 38. So like there's got a strong change there. But anyway, this might be getting a little too um, teeny weeny. So Ruby was born on the 8th of July, 2011, and that makes her one of these new generation of children who know their life purpose very early. So she is a 19 slash 10 slash 1 pioneer life path. Um, I know a lot about the ones. Uh, I actually am married to one. My, uh, some of my best friends are ones. I've studied this a lot. So the ones break away. And they are very good at identifying toxic patterns and then 
making a shift or being an icebreaker. It's not an easy or popular job, but they are strong enough to do it. Now, um, Ruby is likely to have uh, lots of, you know, dramatic shifts and, and growth spurts um, at one. So maybe during the conception pregnancy stage, you know, it might have been perhaps, you know, quite dramatic for Kathy, which you would imagine, you know, having your first child always is. Uh, at the age of 10 is interesting because actually Ruby is 10 right now. And it made me wonder if her spirit was reaching out and saying, hey, do this thing about me and my mum. I don't know, but I, I mean, I'm not making it up. I have so many children come to me. This has happened to me for decades where they literally drag their parents in. Like I've had eight-year-olds bring their mum by the hand and be like, pay this woman money <laughs> to talk to her. Um, I'm not sure why. Like, honestly, I was a scientist for so long and I have a very strong you know, rational skeptic streak, but maybe because I love children so much. And I felt really misunderstood as a child. So I really have a passion um, that we have this objective view of each other and that we allow each other to, to live our own journeys, really. Anyway, so uh, I looked into Ruby's name and it's an 11. So my mind is blown. <laughs> and she also has a strong 911 in her chart, which in my experience is about being a global healer. Um, someone who often um, helps a lot of people from different cultures and nationalities. So it'll be very interesting to see what Ruby does. Um, so Kathy then went through her final uh, five personal year, which was also a challenge year at 39, and that's when she retired um, from Cottage by the Sea. Now, looking into her chart, as of um, 43, she's in my experience, she's done actually a lot of what she came to do this lifetime in terms of like things she needed to clean up in her homework. And that's not to say there's nothing left to do. It's more just that she has just a lot more choices and there's a lot more possibility from this point onwards. My chart is actually very similar. I'm 41, so and I can feel in a couple of years everything's going to open up. Uh, so, you know, in a way I'm, I'm just so delighted to be doing this and, and learning the whole time as I do this reading. Um, so what we see, yeah, again, uh, in Kathy's two or 11 personal year, she was the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games Ambassador or one of them, which makes sense. And yeah, right now she's 49. So there's not too much information about what kathy has been doing recently. What I could see in her chart is there's a lot of change for her coming up. So obviously 52, 53, another shift in personal years. And then around 56 and 57, not only does Ruby hit her life path uh, turning point of 19 where perhaps you know she's quite sure of what she wants to do and where she wants to go um, but this is also actually a really good time for Kathy so it's so uh, I love the um the pairing of parents and children children's charts and even the pairing with the grandparents charts my goal over time is actually to create um, greater family grids or trees at night while my children are sleeping but hey look if you're still watching this Again, I appreciate it because I just care so much about this and I'm just going to um, put the screen share here. I hope you can understand why because honestly, I, I've done this with Cathy's um, information. It has been easier because obviously a lot of her life is in the public eye. So it's been kind of just matching the data. But I've done this with thousands of people where I didn't know them. And to be honest, that's easier. <laughs> because uh, I suppose you don't have any idea of what to expect, so you just kind of go in with a big smile on your face and hope it works. But nevertheless, I'd better start winding up. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, fairly detailed numerology reading for Kathy Freeman. This is probably the longest one that I've posted publicly, uh, but I'm getting to that point in my career where I actually feel it's important that the people who are drawn to this work um, come in so look, if you are interested in what you have just witnessed, if you would like to learn it, like just have a look at my website, sorry.com. And honestly, I just want to say thank you so much because even just by watching this, perhaps, you know, there have been lots of little pops and clicks. And I believe the greatest use of numerology is forgiveness. Self-forgiveness, other forgiveness, universe forgiveness. Uh, when we start to see the patterns in our life, when we start to see the matrix, 
when we answer the call of the repeated numbers 11, 11, 12, 12, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 6, 3, 4, 4, 4, and we learn numerology, which is the invitation. There's an enormous sense of satisfaction we get just from our daily life. We're able to see basically the ingredients list that was hidden from us before. We're able to discern relationships, businesses, um, decisions that are good for us. And that is not to say that life is a piece of cake, uh, but certainly it tastes better when you use spiritual principles like this to help yourself and others. So it's been my privilege to present this information to you. This is Sarah from Sariab.com, Facebook, The Numbers Queen, and Instagram, Sariab1111. And I just want to give a couple of shout outs for tonight. Firstly, uh, to Kathy and her family and just her spirit group, who I believe um, have been helping me to do this tonight. Also to Roberto, um, Melinda, Craig, all the good people and spirits who have conspired to make this happen, you know who you are, um, to all the people who have believed in my work over the years because I just wouldn't be here without you. There have been many, many times it's just been a hair's breadth from giving up on this work because it does feel a little bit weird. Um, but each time I just get these emails, these messages, and you know, I just get back up again because I deeply care about people understanding each other and themselves. I honestly believe this is your basic human right. So yeah, also thanks to my friends, my family, my hilarious children. Um, and I think that's that's just about it. And the last group actually who I really, really want to thank is my Patreon study group. These are the people who subscribe um, just so that I can pump out blogs and videos like this. If you'd like to join us, please just check out the links. So thank you so much. May the double peace sign 1111s be with you. And I hope that this has changed your life in a small or big way. See you next time. Bye.